to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I believe, I believe in the power of God. I believe in the wisdom that comes from through and by the word of God and I am convinced that outside of the influence of the word of God no one has a predictable destiny hallelujah the word of God is the surety the guarantee that an individual regardless the current background regardless the current situation the word of God leaves us with an assurance that a man is able to navigate his way to a life of excellence and victory, regardless the current situation. That means that in your pursuit for a life of meaning and excellence, if you ignore the wisdom that comes from and by the word of God, then there, there, you are only multiplying your seasons of pain. It is not only Satan that causes seasons of pain ignoring god's modus operandi his principle as far as our advancement is concerned can multiply our years of pain so conferences like these are designed to be feasts of light where god himself grants us access to high level spiritual illumination hallelujah by the power of his word and then we are strengthened by that word we are guided by that word we are directed by that word and like pastor so brilliantly shared earlier on when we hear the word we understand the information then we obtain grace to now walk in keeping with that which commits god's integrity there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to suppress your growth when you walk through this pathway so i want you to please pay attention um I believe that that which I'll share within the time that we have will add to our spiritual understanding. I am very intentional about seeing that every moment and every opportunity God gives me before his people is well maximized and that you will receive a thought that will guide your Christian experience to make it richer in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So there are many factors that are responsible for the victory of the believer. Principally, the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ as revealed from scripture comes with a destiny defining implication. That means if and when an individual encounters the Lord Jesus Christ, the first port of call as far as the benefit of salvation is concerned is your spiritual life. The Bible lets us know that on account of receiving that substitutionary sacrifice we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son is that true hallelujah but then it does not just stop at that point all the the faculties of our lives are affected by the implication of this zoe life our minds our lives physically and then our destinies are we together so the basis for any believer's victory the basis for any believer's victory is hinged on that which was done upon the cross but now we need to understand the dynamics of releasing the power that is resident in this life this is where i believe many and most believers are you know at a loss as to what to do so many people claim that which has been finished on the cross and that is a fact but then the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 
it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts that means not having the requisite level of spiritual knowledge can shortchange you from manifesting the the fullness of the potential are we together now that this substitutionary sacrifice has afforded you that means you can find any two believers even mentored by the same pastor like your pastor are we together exposed to the same spiritual environment but as far as their christian experience is concerned they can be east and west apart as far as results are concerned the difference is not the love of god the difference is not the will of god in fact the difference is not even the predeterminate counsel of God. The difference is that one person may have accessed in addition to knowing that Jesus died and gave you a life that is superior. They have accessed the dynamics of activating that life. Are we together? And are we learning already? So the basis for the believer's victory. I, I say this because we live in a world where the moment you begin to succeed at any level, people want to probe into the basis of your results. And it is important that as a believer, you should be able to defend that which is happening in and through your life. Are we together now? The believer's victory is hinged principally, foundationally upon Jesus and that which has come from his substitutionary sacrifice. But then it does not stop there. Knowing that for a fact does not automatically guarantee a victorious life. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, and this doubles as a word just to honor your man of God for the many tremendous transformation. I just sat back there watching the, uh, the experience of the people who were interviewed and almost all of them were attesting to the fact that their lives had been transformed you find what he's doing in jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 let's read together one to read it says and i will give you shepherds or pastors according to my heart uh-huh they will feed you with knowledge and an understanding so every pastor is like a spiritual chef are we together and that the menu is knowledge and understanding the difference between knowledge and understanding is that knowledge creates awareness understanding exposes you to the dynamics of making what you know a reality it's not enough to know you must understand it says in all you're getting get understanding understanding is a profound spiritual miracle it says then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture hallelujah so we're discussing the subject of exploits what does it take to command a life of exploits in the kingdom what does it take for an individual to transit to dimensions of kingdom exploits that will bring glory to the name of the lord dignity to your own life and destiny and then to help you become a blessing to all and sundry the bible says in daniel 11 for our text verse 32 let's look at the b part daniel 11 32 it says but the people that do know their god the people that do know their god he leaves them with an assurance that they will be strong capacity and then number two that they will do exploits the people that do know their god they will be strong and will do exploits let's walk through a few other scriptures isaiah 8 18 isaiah 8 18 isaiah 8 18 it says i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and we are for wonders in israel if we can have kjv that's fine i and the children that the lord has given me your children your child does not just mean your human a human being 
a child your child means anything that is a product of your creativity a product of your effort a product of your investment your child can be your business your child can be the work god has committed he says i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and we are for wonders that means your life should be an explanation of something about god someone who is confused about the dimension of god should be referred to your life for clarity if there is something about God that I do not understand, God should be able to say, all right, since you read your Bible and you did not get it, look at the life of this man for further explanation. The favor of God should be personified in a life. The mercy of God should be personified in a life. The Bible says in Isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2, verse 2 particularly, it says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body. It says, for I called him alone and I blessed him then I increased him. That means in God's mind, Abraham is the portrait of a man who has been blessed by God. That means if God says, I will bless you, don't assume you understand what he said. You have to study Abraham to know how far he intends to bless you. Are we together? When you want to understand the power and the potency of the ministry of prayer, the man that the Bible recommends is Elijah. James chapter 5, when you begin to read from verse 13 down to 18, it says Elijah was a man of like passion. Are we together? And then that he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a period of three and a half years. Then he prayed again. He was using Elijah to buttress on the fact that the fervent an effectual prayer of the righteous man avails much. That means God's kingdom was so designed, number one, that he communicates a thought through his word and then he finds a people, listen carefully, he finds a people who personify his intent. That means everything God is saying, someone's life should be a healthy capture of it. If God says, I can lift, your life should be so lifted that you become God's reference point in explaining that scripture. I'm saying this because it is prophetic God is going to be doing something in someone's life that your life will literally be a message. You pass a mall and people begin a discussion because you came. Say, have you ever seen God lift a man from nowhere? Say, I have not. He said, that man right there is a testament of the lifting power of God. You see, the mind works based on pictures and visuals. This is the reason why without thoughts, translating to pictures we cannot really understand and assimilate so when god personalizes his his thoughts in men it is to be able to give you a memory of his faithfulness so that you do not forget if by any means you have forgotten that god is faithful when an individual passes you remember we are called living epistles. We should be the continuation of every man's devotional. That means the devotional should not just end with a book and paper. We are living epistles. Hallelujah. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Furthermore, the Bible tells us Jesus teaching in what we call the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5. When you begin your reading from verse 13 down to 16, he began to teach the people and he said, Ye are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. Very powerful information. And salt, you know, serves two purposes majorly. Number one, taste. Number two, preservation. So when Jesus says you are the salt of the earth, that means that your life should give value and dignity to people. Then he now says, but if the salt loses its saltiness, it is good for nothing but to be thrown down and to be trodden underfoot by men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. He likens you to a city that is set on a hill. Are we together? Yes. He says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but they put it on a candlestick so that it gives light to everyone in the room. Then he ends verse 16 by charging you. He says, so let your light, let your light. The word let means permit, allow. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Are we still together?
in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says something interesting I want us to read together in concert when it is projected. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Let's read together. Ready? Want to read. It says, and with great power, uh-huh, of the resurrection. And he said, great grace was upon how many? All. All of these scriptures are to prove to you so that you settle it once and for all that a life of exploits is not for some. There are things in the spirit that God specifies. He gave unto some. But there are possibilities in the kingdom that are for all. Are we together? They gave witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon them all. That means every one of us here seated and falling online is a bona fide candidate for a life of exploits and this is not a cliche it's in your destiny discovered or not it is in your destiny that you live a great life remember the man Gideon in Judges chapter 6 when you read this was a valiant man with the destiny of a deliverer but he was hiding and when the Lord came to him he was hiding and God called him by his destiny and his future called him a mighty man of valor and he was hiding his excuse that he was the least and coming from the family that was the least god said that that is none of my business this is what i have for you it's amazing that when god talks to you he does not consider anything that should be a limitation god talks to men like he's talking to himself are we together it is in my destiny and it is in your destiny to live a life of excellence, a life of grace, and a life of glory. You need to believe this. If you do not believe this, nothing else you will hear that will profit you. I'm telling you sincerely. Because you can have a self-defeating, limited understanding. You hope that other people do well and you clap. But if you do not believe it as a settled, conf a settled information in your heart, that a life of exploits... A life of excellence a life that brings glory to the name of the Lord should be the kind of life that I was designed to live when you have that then you are ready to kill all the excuses that impede you are we clear on that praise the Lord please shout a loud amen. amen the next thing I want to communicate is the fact that success victory exploits in this kingdom is a product of many components principally like i said earlier on that which jesus did and has done upon the cross but then it is broken down into many dimensions and this respectfully speaking i think is where many people have missed it there are people who claim success claim a life of exploits there are people who pray it there are people who walk it there are people who wish it are we together but there is a pathway designed for an individual to transit from a life of failure maybe a life of mediocrity maybe to a life of excellence that gives god glory until you understand that exploits is ministry you will not take it seriously exploits is not something you choose to do the same way you have a dogged determination as far as um things like parenting things like loving the lord when you see a life of exploit as a privilege that you can choose or not choose based on your personality if you understand that jesus being glorified depends on the extent of your exploit you will give it the same dedication and seriousness what does god have to gain if i rise what does god have to gain if i prosper what does God have to gain if the whole nation comes to the knowledge of Jesus in and through my life and contribution? You need to know that the Father is glorified when the sons are glorified. John chapter 17 from verse 1. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven praying and he said, Father, the hour has come. He said, glorify now thy son that thy son will give glory, will bring glory unto you. John chapter 15 and verse 8 hallelujah john chapter 15 and verse 8 please give it to us don't be tired of scriptures this is the basis of your confidence john 15 8 herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit that ye bear 
much fruit someone say much fruit so god is not glorified when you bear little fruit much fruit much fruit verse 16 of the same scripture says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you the word ordained means to legitimize your operation i have ordained you that you go and bear fruit i have chosen you and ordained you galatians 1 24 very very short sentence but is filled with rich and profound truth it says and they glorified god in me in my life be glorified be glorified in this church be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank you that means you're refusing to rise to certain dimensions is like a book with certain pages missing there is an information locked up in a page that will complete someone's understanding about God. Your refusal to rise to certain dimensions have robbed a region, a nation, a territory from understanding certain spiritual possibilities. The songs that have refused to come out from your spirit has robbed someone from knowing God deeper. The prosperity you have refused to access either through religiosity or laziness has stopped someone from having access to certain things every time i rise i'm adding pages to the book as far as the understanding of god is concerned paul would boldly say we are living epistles living epistles living epistles that means every time someone is in confusion as to what God can do with a man, as to what God can do with a people, my life becomes an unfolding explanation, an addition to your understanding that you can look at me and learn God. You can look at me and my life becomes a lecture about the faithfulness, the mercy, the kindness, the goodness, the speed. All of the things that are contained in God can be revealed in the saints. But that will only be at the, in, at the instance of a life of exploits. This is very powerful. When I learned this, I vowed a vow that I was not going to be small. Not from a carnal standpoint, not from a competitive standpoint. I realized that my life could capture much as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned. And I said, the nations under my watch must know Jesus and must see him as clear as my results can produce. If Jesus heals, I will not only say it, I will show it. If Jesus lifts, I will not only say it, I will show it. One last scripture and then I tie a few things. Acts chapter 8, please. Give us verse 5. Acts chapter 8 and we'll begin to read from verse 5. This is the structure of the kingdom. I'm praying that God is speaking to someone already. Shaking away mediocrity, shaking away excuses and telling you that your refusal to rise is not just a cultural thing. It's not just a tribal thing. You are robbing nations and territories of the opportunity to see Jesus revealed through you. The Bible says Peter went down to Samaria. Philip now went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. I love the next verse. The Bible says, And the people with one accord gave heed unto these things which Philip spake. This is what I want you to see. Hearing and seeing. That is the character of the economy of heaven. You do not only hear. When you hear that God heals, you must see that God heals. He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord favors. Oh, taste and see that the Lord can turn a man's life around. It is not just to hear. You can taste. There is an experience to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Job said, I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see at thee. I have gained experience. I know. It was the apostle Paul who was speaking and he said, but I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded that he is able. 
I have tasted of his ability. I know. So there are keys to a life of exploits. I want you to know, and I believe that it's in the heart of your pastor, for everyone in this church, every believer here seated, and the many who are following online, that when you access the keys of the kingdom that make for a life of excellence and glory you will bring much good there is no man of god i know of who loves jesus sincerely and loves his people who does not desire to see them rise and scale heights in life and destiny the first part of call being your spiritual progress and then it should spill over to every aspect of your life if you are that person please shout a loud amen, amen. hallelujah let me give us two keys for tonight and then we'll pray with the time we have left. There are keys that control exploits in this kingdom and I beseech you by the mercies of God that you open your heart and your spirit. As much as I've challenged you and painted such a glorious picture, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but not many people will come into the experience of all that I've said because there is a responsibility component to your dealings with God. Are we together now? Yes, sir. There is a responsibility component. And those who are ready to take responsibility to understand the laws of the spirit and to access them and engage them by faith are the people who inevitably will command exploits. There is nothing like luck. There is mercy, but there is no luck. Not in this kingdom. There is favor but there is no luck. The moment you begin to think in a superstitious way, th that is the realm of mediocres. Champions are people who take advantage of the resources of heaven together with a superior orientation and begin to make tangible, responsible progress in their lives. Mediocres will always use things like background. They will use things like whatever will be, will be. Very well-intentioned statement, but is full of lies and deception. A lie is anything God did not say. A lie is not just what sounds bad. Anything God did not say is a lie. It says, let God be true and every man so when you hear a lie, you know where it came from. It came from men and their philosophies and their, the fabrications that came from their frustrations. For instance, if anybody ever told you that you will never rise above and beyond your current realm, it is a lie because that's not what God told you. The person may be sincere, but it's still a lie. A lie does not come from bad people. A lie comes from men. God is not a man that he should lie. So where does it, lies come from? Men. Motivated by spirits, yes, but largely men. There are things I believe about my life that no one will preach me against it. I have not only believed, it has become my experience. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus himself had the confidence to speak to them with power and to let them know that his origin was not earthly. Can you imagine talking to people who had you were born? They saw you. Some of the disciples, was, they were older than him and yet he would call them little children. Have you any catch? What level of confidence? Where did he derive that conviction from? Hmm. Lazarus was a dead man. They were crying and he said, let's go and wake him. Our brother sleepeth. Look at, look at his philosophy. Look at the construct of his understanding. He comes to a place, 5,000 people... And then he looks, Andrew brings a young lad with five loaves and two fish and he says, that's enough. Save yourself any frustration. He lifts it up, gives thanks and says, go and begin to share. Do you know what would have happened to the disciples if that bread didn't multiply? You know, when you read your Bible, you have to think, widen the scope of your understanding. How do you play such games? 5,000 men aside women and children. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. May your life command fearful results in the name of Jesus Christ. That after this conference, you will rise to a level and a dimension that the next time you come to testify is your tears that will do the speaking. Your life would have been so transited in glory and grace that those who knew you before this conference will say, what in the world is this? So God can lift this far. 
hallelujah do you believe this the first key that controls a life and a destiny of exploits as revealed from scripture is an experience with God write it down please and I want you to please listen very carefully you need a very deep spiritual experience with God if you are going to rise and excel the kingdom's way you need a deep experience with God very deep experience with God the God you experience is the God you reveal to your world the God you experience is the God that you reveal to your world if you have experienced the similitude of a weak God that is going to inform your orientation as far as speaking to people about him is concerned the Bible talks about a woman who was at the well are we together now Jesus comes to this woman at the well and they begin a discussion discussion that started with the issue of water then went to the issue of worship and she said I discern that you are a prophet let me ask you a question that has been burning in my heart and then one thing led to the other finally she gets to know that this whoever he is must be a very great man and the Bible says she left her fetcher and everything and ran to the city it was her encounter that gave her that energy that boldness remember that woman was supposedly an outcast what would give her the confidence to stand before people she didn't mind whether they would believe her or not he said come see a man there are statements you only make out of conviction and the convictions are products of encounters there are things you cannot say until you have met god come see a man that has told me everything I have done. Her witness was so compelling. I'm sure that the people came doubting, but they still came. They came hoping to find a reason against what she said, but they still came. The Bible says when they came, and then they sat and heard Jesus for themselves. Here was their conclusion. They said, now we believe. Not just because you said it, paraphrasing. We have encountered him for ourselves. Let me tell you the truth. The reason why the Christian experience of many believers just looks like um, a, a very shadow experience is because most people have not paid the price to know God. Most people have not embraced the spiritual investment of pursuing his presence until you really know the person you gave your life to and the one who stands behind you your confidence in life the fortitude to dare the limitations of life is a derivative of the depth of your encounter when david stood before goliath goliath looked at david and said am i a dog israel is this your best saul shame on you as a king you mean out of all the warriors to fight me i know i will kill you but respect the person you are bringing to me and david kept quiet and watched him when he was done speaking david said now you've had your turn let me speak he said listen let me tell you the truth you come to me with your spears and your bows but i come to you in a name i had an encounter in the wilderness a name is a weapon then ah that means when someone comes with bow and arrow and all kinds of things you can use a name i come to you in a name and began to prophesy to him how he was going to fall i will use this sling to bring down your head i will use your own sword and i will lift it up and give it to the birds and goliath said you've insulted me enough any part of goliath david's sling hit would have still brought him down because he was already dead james 2 26 is how he died that a body without a spirit is dead the spirit and the priesthood that was behind Goliath was already dead is someone learning tonight yes. the depth of your experience with God Moses was Moses had the destiny of a deliverer but not that version of him he had to remain in the backside of the mountain and when the season had come for his prophetic destiny to be activated it didn't just start with a command the bible says moses looked and he saw a bush that was burning and not be consumed 
and he said i will turn aside to see this great sight when god saw that he turned aside he said moses now take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground they began their discussion he said look i have seen the pain and the cry the affliction of my people by reason of their taskmasters and i am come down the bible there reveals how god comes down he comes down when men rise up when men rise up to their responsibility god has come down i am come down moses now you stand and when he equipped moses he sent him moses said ah, 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 ah. don't make me a fool in front of pharaoh who shall i tell pharaoh has sent me i have heard the instruction but i need to know the instructor who is speaking don't send me with an instruction alone i need to know my confidence should not just be hinged on the instruction what is the guarantee and he said that's a good question i am that i am i am that i am he said go and tell pharaoh i am has sent you when moses stood before pharaoh and said thus said the lord god of the hebrews let my people go pharaoh laughed and he threw his rod moses would have been discouraged but his confidence and his staying power was derived from his experience can i tell you my bible says if you turn aside in the day of adversity it is because your strength you need to learn where we find strength in this kingdom it's in his presence the presence of god is the place of exchange please listen a life of exploits does not just start with vision you can have all the vision in the world. You will soon learn that it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. There are many visionary people who have not taken one step out of the cave as far as destiny is concerned. Because except the Lord builds a house, the Bible says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. That it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but that he can give his beloved sleep hallelujah are we together now vision is powerful but all those things are secondary you need an encounter with God an encounter with God creates conviction an encounter with God swallows up fear it gives you the audacity look at me please you see when you when you explore life and destiny just from a physical dimension there are too many variables that sustain within themselves the power to bully your confidence away are we together someone will use your background and that alone has victimized you someone will use your father's problem a problem he caused before you were born and you will still have to suffer it remember our man who was sick who seen that this man was born blind him or his father there was something jesus taught them that the sins of the father can bear consequence even on the children we live in a world where people use all kinds of parameters to bully people out of a place of confidence you don't look like it you don't belong to this group you are not this tribe you are not this person you don't you are not affiliated you've not gone to this and that and we have all kinds of modern credentials that we demand from people to present before they are accepted as far as the world is concerned you need an experience with god that is deeper than the ignorance of men to be able to stand tall even if alone Many believers do not have the staying power to push through until the gates of destiny is open. And it is because they do not know the one who sent them. Ask Pastor Godwin when he left Lagos coming to Abuja. Nobody wrote anything and signed it. That as soon as you arrive, just know you'll be happy caught seeing me. And even if there's someone like that, the Bible already told us how mundane the guarantee of men is concerned. Even though well-meaning, well-intentioned, a man can say, I will help you, and he's sacked that night. It's one thing for him to have integrity and then have capacity. Is someone learning now? They looked on to him and the Bible says their faces were lightened. Please hear me. For someone, by reason of this conference, you need to shut down. You have known many things in your life and God is not one of them. 
you know how people give visas you know how people give uh, connections abroad you know how people connect you to this minister you know how but you don't know god but the people that do know their god there are many of us who can make any and everything happen for people but they do not know god i know how to connect you to the minister of so 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 and so that's wonderful I hope you know that every destiny helper does not know he's a destiny helper. He is made to be a destiny helper. Are we together? Man of God, all it takes for a great ministry is not a church and money. <laughs> it's a joke. You will need more than a sermon. You will need more than a good auditorium. You will need more than a sincere heart. Many have sustained these things and are still frustrated. It takes an experience with God. For some of you, you need to pause because you are running and the doors are not opening. Go back and say, God, we need to talk. You are sending me to a people. Do, you see, let me tell you this. The knowledge of God is powerful. As much as we criticize Jonah, there was something Jonah knew about God. Jonah ran away not just in disobedience. He knew that God was a merciful God. And he said, God, i rather run because I know that when a man's rebellion is prolonged, it will be prolonged beyond the boundary of mercy. And judgment is what follows. So Jonah was, he used the, his knowledge of the nature of God to make sure that that imminent punishment upon Nineveh would happen. And God rebuked him and said, Jonah, go back. And Jonah said, I know what you would do. As soon as Jonah preached and they started repenting, he was angry. He was not, he was angry because he said, no, this is unfair. There was something about the nature of God he knew. That the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and rich in love. What do you know about God that gives you confidence in the face of situations? Do you know he's a restorer? That will give you hope. Don't say I got born again at 45. Uh, no, 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 no. There is something about the knowledge of God that gives you confidence. There's nobody to help me. Apostle, you may say, find strength. God is a master at handpicking people anyhow. Even if it means a fish giving you coin. He's that determined to make sure that you do not face embarrassment. God, why me? Is the language of those who do not know him. Mm -mm. Because, let me tell you this, in the economy of God, there are many things that carry the semblance of evil. But is God's secret way of hiding your breakthrough from the eyes of those who will abort it until it manifests? So many things you are casting and binding is actually God walking. And he said, what are you doing? You're not knowing how I walk is making you pray against things that are the answer to your prayer. Be careful when you ask God for favor. He may take you to the prison. He looks at a woman and says you are highly favored. You thought the next thing that will happen to that woman is a recognition by Pilate and so on and so forth for national honor. That's what happens to people who are favored. And the next thing that happens to that woman is a plethora of controversies. Beginning with her husband-to-be. From where is this pregnancy coming from? He said, let me tell you sincerely, I am innocent. I only met a spirit. A spirit? Do I look like a child? Does a child pay dowry? A spirit? God had to intervene and say, Joseph, listen, 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 listen. Don't be afraid. What is in this woman is of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget 
to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye